Good evening friends. Moving on from the last session where we had learned about the DDL triggers uh, and how to implement them as a policy and as an audit, auditing mechanism, uh, we are going to see the DML triggers and how to implement them. Uh, now DML trigger is basically a, a data manipulation trigger which means that uh, this table trigger is applied on a table whenever there is an insert, update or delete happening uh, on a particular uh, table. Uh, and we are able, we can, uh, uh, we can audit the records and, and handle them a, a, in a way uh, we would like to. So here, uh, I would like to explain that DML triggers are, are basically uh, unlike uh, the DDL triggers, which are only uh, for or after triggers. Uh, uh, DML triggers uh, are of two kinds. Uh, there'll be a for and uh, for or after trigger and then also we have an instead of trigger so we'll uh, we'll look uh, the first one uh, that is the for or after trigger in this uh, session and the next session uh, following this one we'll learn about uh, the instead of trigger so here what i have here in this demo session is uh, i have a employee table a simple employee table and uh, this table looks something like this I have around six records uh, with the employee ID employee name department and their respective salary uh, in this table uh, so this is just a, a sample a table with, uh, with uh, some sample records for you and now what I have uh, created is uh, I have created uh, an audit table which is employee underscore audit uh, this table has the same number of uh, fields as an employee table uh, but adding to that I have uh, added the columns login name execution time the SPID and the action uh, so what these four columns designate is whenever there is an insert update or delete happening on a table uh, on, on the employee table we should be able to log the uh, log uh, the login name or the person who has executed the uh, uh, the DML query then we should be able to track down the time when this was uh, when this occurred and uh, the SPID from where this uh, this uh, was initiated and then the action uh, that was uh, whether it was an insert update or delete which happened uh, so this can be uh, referred as an auditing table for each of the inserts uh, 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 updates or deletes happening on our table so we can you know refer it now we have this table empty as of now and uh, next what we what we will see is we'll begin with uh, the insert trigger uh, so first of all is uh, we have created uh, we'll create a trigger for uh, employee audit insert this trigger uh, will be created on the employee table and this will be for so for insert means that this trigger will be initiated after the insert query is fired and the action is taken so once the insert happens after the insert uh, we'll be able to you know uh, fire this uh, SQL Server will fire this trigger so, so now there is a, a point which uh, I need to make here is uh, for the DML triggers you will have uh, a temporary uh, table which um, and where your record goes or, or from where you can refer the data so which which is called an inserted and deleted table so it can you can say that whenever you try to uh, insert a particular record or delete a particular record the record which is being inserted is further first inserted into this table uh, before committing that record into the uh, into the main table that is the employee so before I mean once uh, we will be able to refer the data uh, with the inserted table uh, you can refer this as, as a kind of a temporary cache table which uh, stores your employee all the records which is being which is going to be inserted in the employee table the same goes with the deleted I mean when you when we are trying to delete so we'll have a, a table as deleted although there is no such table as updated for you uh, it is uh, we'll come to that soon so here if you see uh, it is a basic is a, it's a basic trigger that we have created on insert uh, which will uh, on after the data is inserted or after the record is inserted uh, this the data respective data will be inserted into our audit table uh, these are the four records and along with that uh, we have uh, written the query for uh, getting the logging name the execution time the session ID and the action that is in the action we have designated here as I which means as uh, this trigger was fired or, or this uh, record was inserted so that's uh, that's our action plan for uh, for the insert part now moving on this is our insert 
trigger we execute this moving on what we have here again is we have a deleted trigger now as I referred here we are going to uh, use the deleted table uh, whenever there is a delete happening on, on the employee table and we'll insert the data being deleted into the employee audits table uh, and these uh, the data which was deleted will be inserted here and along with that we'll also log the four uh, columns as I had said and, and D designates here that the record was deleted uh, so that's uh, your deleted trigger for you this is the action plan for your deleted trigger now that's it now moving on to the last uh, or the updated uh, trigger this is the trigger that we have created for update I mean after an uh, update query f is fired now what we have here is is uh, whenever there is an update you can refer the column directly uh, so we have segregated the update trigger to fire only when there is an update on the department column of the employee table uh, which means whenever there is an update happening only on the department column this trigger will be fired uh, and we uh, are going to log uh, so going back we do not have any updated table as such uh, we have the inserted and the deleted so what we'll have here is the deleted table is actually the existing record which is going to be updated so that is the pre uh, update uh, data which will be inserted so here if you see we are going to insert the deleted record first uh, deleted record first which will designate uh, the record which is prior to the update so what we have here is we'll, we'll uh, say the uh, specify the action to be update deleted which means the data or the record was deleted uh, while while update was happening and after that we are going to record or audit the inserted record so inserted record is after uh, the, the update happened how the record looks like uh, and then we will designate is it as update inserted so I hope I'm clear enough to make you understand that uh, insert and updated inserted and updated uh, tables are the only one in the update condition also and this update is fired on uh, a particular column that is when we are going to update a department column only then this update is going to be fired so this is uh, your trigger uh, for recording or auditing your update action now let's fire this and once this is done we'll go down and start our uh, uh, audit, audit mechanism and we'll just see so currently we just have this uh, records in our table what we do is uh, let me try to insert a record into the employee table so I've inserted one record in the employee table I have created this is uh, with my windows authentication login I have also logged in with my SA account now let me switch uh, to my SA account and then first let me see what the audit and the employee table looks like so I have inserted uh, one more record with Steve and the same was inserted into my uh, my audit table uh, with the login execution SPID and the action that this record was inserted now what I try here next is uh, let's uh, try to update this records uh, department so we have the department as IT let me try to update this records uh, uh, you know department to HR so let me do this so I've done this uh, so now let's see how the tables look like so okay the department has been updated uh, next if you look at you have two records being inserted into your audit table which is pre update and post update so this record is pre update which means update deleted uh, the action shows update deleted it shows the SPID it shows the login account and it shows the department ID before the update happened uh, the next is your post update so post update your record looks something like this and uh, the details have also been logged and now let's try to uh, update uh, for employee ID let's try to update some other column and see if the trigger is being fired so we, we are going to update the salary for employee ID 2 uh, and, and see how it goes that's uh, about it so we have updated the salary uh, yet if you see so that 
log was not maintained because the trigger is uh, is not you know uh, fired we have filtered the trigger to be fired uh, to be fired only when uh, you know uh, the department is going to be updated and, and not uh, otherwise uh, the last but not the least let's try to delete this uh, record from our table itself right so we have deleted the record and the life cycle of the record looks something like this so the record has been removed from the your employee table and you can see first the record was inserted it was updated this was this is a pre update record this is your post update record and this is when the record was deleted or removed from your table so this is a uh, for for trigger for you and how you can use it to you know uh, get the life cycle of of the record that has you know uh, been inserted updated or deleted uh, for in the different scenarios uh, for you next session we will explore the instead of trigger uh, and see how instead of triggers are different compared to the for or after trigger thank you friends i hope this is helpful to you